Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to part two of my unboxing video for the Pathfinder Bestiary Battle Cards. Uh, if you didn't check out part one, uh, there will be a card that you can click on at the beginning of this video, assuming I don't forget to put it there. Uh, but essentially I did the, the initial unboxing and went through the first half of the cards, which are presented in alphabetical order. Uh, for those who are unaware, the Bestiary Battle Cards are essentially your stat cards or stat blocks put on card form for the creatures in the second edition Pathfinder Bestiary. Uh, it appears there's 450 cards in this box set, and it's apparently it covers absolutely everything in the book, which, with that number of cards, it makes sense that it would have all the, the stats in here. Now, these cards, um, I did the review portion of it in the first part because, honestly, my mind had been made up by the time I was about just basically opening up the box and seeing the way that they do the cards themselves, but these cards are fantastic, and to me, this is the measuring stick against which all other monster stat cards or things similar to this are going to be compared against from this point going forward, at least on my channel. This is a very high bar that's been set. First of all, these cards are absolutely huge. Uh, if you didn't see the first part, uh, the dimensions of them are about 10 centimeters in width and 15 centimeters in height. And for comparison, here's one of the Pathfinder uh, Critical Fumble cards. This is one's actually sleeved. And as you can see, this card, which is the size of a standard size playing card, um, takes up, you know, it's a little over half the height of the card and quite a bit of space uh, all around. In fact, you could probably fit a second one like that. Uh, so yeah, these things are absolutely huge. They have uh, creature art on the other side, so one side will always have the, the stats for the, the, the Game Master, the other side will have the artwork for the creatures themselves, and I can confirm after spending a day in between doing these parts of the video that there are new pieces of art on these cards for creatures that have variations in their stat blocks, uh, but only one depiction of the creature in the actual bestiary. So, for example, the, the bugbear was the one that I had sort of first I think pondered in part one and there's only one bugbear image in the bestiary but there were two unique different pieces of art for the two different types of bugbear that they had cards for so uh, I was really absolutely impressed with that now these are are going to be largely recycled from what is in the bestiary and I'm sure that other ones probably will come from a huge back catalog um, that Paizo has access to, but it's still a really fantastic detail. Uh, the last thing that really impressed me about these cards as well is that Paizo did not focus heavily on trying to fit everything on one card. Uh, the text size is absolutely great, it's easy to read, um, it's large enough that it's not going to cause eye strain, at least in my opinion, and I've had other card products that I've reviewed you know, have those issues for me. So this is absolutely fantastic, and if a card, if a stat block won't fit on a single card, then they simply have it fit on two of them. Each card is individually numbered, and they will say that the stat block continues on, you know, the, the card number that would precede it. So for example, if this one were to continue, uh, this is 232, uh, so if this had to take up a second card, then it would just say simply, uh, continued on uh, card 233. And then card 233 would say that it's continued from card 222. Uh, 232, I should say, and the artwork would be the same for both versions. In fact, I think there's, looking at the second card down, we're going to get a pretty good look at that here in a second, just to recap. Uh, but this has the stat block that we had in the bestiary. Uh, so it has the abilities, it has the creature's name and its level, its uh, traits, uh, perception, languages, uh, important skills, physical attributes, equipment, armor class, saving throws, hit points, and then some of their special abilities. Um, and they're all, all the actions that they essentially have access to. Uh, so really, really great stuff here. So we're just going to go through the other half of the stack now. Uh, so we're going to start off with the Hill Giant, which I already kind of showed, but there we go. So that's really, really cool. Then we have the Rune Giant, and this is one that I actually really, uh, really thought was kind of neat. So they actually have spell casting abilities, and I've used Giants similar to this in other games, and I, I just really, really love them, so it's cool to see uh, that we have them here. And again, some pretty decent artwork that shows, like, the runes on their uh, on their body. And, oh, actually, yes, perfect. So this is one of the ones that is a two-card uh, two uh, stat block. So, as you can see here, 
it simply says continue on card 234. So then we've got that one. And then on card 234, it says giant rune continued from card 233, which is perfect. And then it gives you the rest of the abilities. And as you can see, it is the same artwork. Then we have our stone giant. And yeah, I was really impressed with the uh, with the artwork. And going back to part one, uh, the one thing I really wasn't expecting, um, I was curious about it, and I thought it would have been cool if they did, but I wasn't expecting them to have actually done it. Uh, but they actually had different art for the different age categories of dragons, which I thought was just an amazing touch. So really impressed with these so far. Here we have our storm giant, and that's actually a pretty, pretty BA looking picture there. The gibbering mouther. Just as gross and unsettling as always. Uh, the Gimmerling. Now a few of these might have weird names that I'm not going to try to pronounce because I'm only going to get it wrong and people seem to take exception to that. So, uh, you know, if something seems too difficult to pronounce, I'm just going to show the, <laughs> the name of it. Uh, but yeah, so we have the uh, the Gimmerling. And uh, this is another two two card creature. The So little disturbing. There's the second half. So again, I, I can't understate how glad I am to see that they weren't focused heavily on trying to get everything to fit on one card. Because I'm sure that they could have, but the text would have been so small that um, it would almost be pointless. Um, like, my eyes aren't getting any younger, unfortunately. Uh, so I appreciate the fact that they went with a, a, a more decent sized text and just a willingness to, to do two different cards here. So here we have Knolls. So again, I don't know how many Knolls. So we'll actually take a look here uh, to see how many pieces of art they had for Knolls in the actual bestiary, since I had the foresight this time to have the book right here with me as I'm going through it. All right, so here we have and uh, the Knoll, so there's the Knoll Hunter, the Knoll Cultist, and the Knoll Sergeant. So we'll see what they've done for the artwork here. Now again, if they use this same art for both the Hunter and the Sergeant, I would be totally fine with that, you know, like truthfully, honestly. In fact, I think this is actually the Knoll Sergeant, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they do there. But um, yeah, I mean, they, they did it with the dragons, they did it with the, the, the bugbear so far. So. Here we have the cultist, which we saw. So we'll now take a look at the hunter and the sergeant. So the, like I said, the, the, the image there more made sense for the sergeant. So we'll look at that, and that's the image there. So the hunter actually has different art. So this is not in the bestiary. This, this image here was not in there. So yeah, I mean, that's just, again, that's just so cool. I mean, they really, could have just used this again, and I would have been fine with it. Um, but they actually did uh, use separate art, which is just awesome. And then, of course, our goblins. We got a goblin commando. I don't know if this art was in there either, actually. Uh, then we got a goblin dog, which that art was in there. So we'll just set that down, set that down. The goblin pyro. This image was in there for sure. I gotta say, I love the, the Pathfinder Goblins. Uh, the Goblin War Chanter. <laughs> uh, I love it. And then the Goblin Warrior, which is also on the cover of the box as well. So cool stuff there. And then we have the Gogatheth. I know I said I wasn't gonna try to pronounce it if, if I couldn't figure it out right away, but anyway, that was a horrible butchering, and I apologize, but here we go. Oh, that is nightmare-inducing. Uh, the Golem Adamantine. Sort of looking like a, a walking furnace. Oh, and that is a two-card stat block. The Alchemical Golem, which is hands down one of my favorite looking monsters, just in terms of the aesthetics in the game. Plus it uses like these syringes, which I just, I just love it. I just, I, I gotta say, um, that's just so cool. It's a little brain in this alchemical solution. The needles for hands. That's just so cool. I'm sorry, but I love it. 
and that's another two card one. In fact, I think all of these golem ones look like they're going to be two cards. Then we got the clay golem. Second half there. The flesh golem, which I think is going to look like all stitched together. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool art. That's cool art though. I like it. And, uh, oh, this one's actually all on one. For a second, it felt like I had two cards, but I didn't. And then the iron golem. With the poisonous gas coming out, which is awesome. Stone golem. Grave Knight. Now that, that is a monster I absolutely love. Just love the look of it. Undead are something I've always been, like, huge on in my campaigns, and this is something that I would definitely, definitely want to build um, a, a scenario around. Then we got some gremlins, so we got the, the gremlin Jenkin. This little, little stabby knife there. The gremlin Mitflit. <laughs> oh. The gremlin Pogwompy. Which is just kind of fun to fun to say. Griffin. That's pretty cool looking too. This is just I, I really I'm really taken with a lot of the art here. I think they did a fantastic job with the artwork in these products. Uh, then the Rickatog. Can kind of see. I think that's. I think those are eyes. Anyway, weird looking creature. It actually has two cards as well. Grim Reaper, a 21 level creature. So this is sort of a campaign ender or one of the the major, a major encounter for high level characters. And yeah, that that looks just about right there. Gives me sort of a, a Castlevania Symphony of the Night vibe, but, uh, it, you know, that's not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. So there we go. That's, again, a two-card one. Then we have the Grim Reaper Lesser, so Lesser Deaths. And, yeah, they also use different artwork for both of them, which is cool. So this is a 16th level creature. Yeah, I mean, again, just I love it. I don't know if they had both art. I'm not going to look up for every single thing, but I just wanted to show a clear example of them using new art for cards instead of just using the same image for multiple creatures. Then we got the Gug. And the Guthaloth. It's actually pretty cool. Gargantuan Construct. Yeah. You can see it, like, rising up out of the ground. There's, like, the trees next to it. Then we have the Anis Hag. The Green Hag. She's got two cards. Uh, the next one here, the Night Hag, also has two cards. That is an awesome-looking uh, creature as well. Actually, my current Pathfinder 2nd Edition game that I was running, uh, one of the I'm, I'm running a pre-written adventure, but one of the characters sort of did some stuff that's off script, which is totally fine. Um, but he's ended up like stumbling across this uh, noble that has a, uh, a hag captured, and um, it was is the the exact reason for it, and, and what's you know the the result of it haven't been revealed yet. But uh, it was kind of interesting to use. But I, I this was the uh, the hag that I used for that. Then we got the Sea Hag. Can't remember if her art was in there either. There we go. Then we have the Harpy. The Hellhound. That is awesome looking. Creature level three. Okay, I may have to use one of these when I get my game back up. Oh, and here's the Nessian Warhound. And yeah, again, different art. They absolutely could have used the same the same image, but they they didn't, and that's awesome. Hobgoblin archer. So these hobgoblins will probably be another example as well. So there we have the hobgoblin archer, hobgoblin general, and I know that like the hobgoblins and goblins, like the hobgoblins in particular, seem to be a little polarizing when it comes to Pathfinder. But honestly, I 
the fact that they're, you know, related to goblins, I actually like the fact that you can put a, like, a goblin next to a hobgoblin, and you could see that they're part of the same overall larger species, um, just different variants of it. So, I don't know, I, I, I like the hobgoblins. Uh, I was never overly attached to the, like, red-skinned, uh, or red, reddish furred, uh, like, red, thick, coarse hair fur, and then, like, the blue noses. It just never made sense uh, to me. Even though, uh, even though, oddly enough, being from Nova Scotia, um, a blue noser is one of the phrases that are used to describe people that live in this province because of the uh, the, the the sailing ship, the schooner. But uh, yeah, I just I was just never attached to the the older version. I, I actually like the hobgoblins here, and here we have the hobgoblin soldier. I don't I don't think that was in the the book either. I'm pretty I don't recognize that art, but that is pretty cool looking as well. We got our homunculus, and then we have so we have riding horse, war horse. Now this is these are small stat blocks, um, so they're just going to have like the one image there, and that's fine because there was no need to have like two different cards uh, for this. So like, again, I I think it's a smart use of these, especially for like animals and and uh, things like that. So these would be like familiars or mounts. Uh, so here we have the the ponies. Aww. There you go. And then we have the Hydra. And this is another two carter, so I'm just going to show the one's artwork here. But there we go, we got the Hydra. Then we have the Hyenas and the Hyenadon. And again, just because the stat blocks are so small, they were able to fit two on the card, and again, totally fine. Um, the only difference really would be the size, so you could use the same art and it makes perfect sense. Here we go, we got our Kobold Dragon Mage. Love it. <clears throat> I actually really like the Kobold design in Pathfinder as well. Here we have the Kobold Scout. And then the Kobold Warrior, I, I bet you anything that this one's going to be red. Yeah, okay. Actually, I think... I think all three of those arts are in the, the Bestiary itself. I think. But still, really, really cool stuff. Then we have the Kraken, which is another two-card one, so I'm just going to scoop up both cards here because we don't need to show. But yeah, we got the Unleash the Kraken, the Kruth. That's actually, that's actually pretty cool. And yeah, what's, what's actually also interesting about going through these cards is there are some creatures that I just always skim over when I'm like flipping through the book. Um, so it's kind of cool to see, especially ones that don't necessarily have artwork for them, in the book, so it's something that, like, I look at something like this, and I probably would not have normally used this creature um, in my campaigns, but, you know, just seeing how cool this looks, it kind of makes me want to do it. So this is another uh, another sort of understated element of these of these decks, is just looking at the, the images might draw your attention to creatures that you might otherwise not normally consider. So here we have the the Lamias or Lamias. So this is the standard one, and then we have the Matriarch, and then we got some Leshies. So we got the Fungus Leshy, and that's actually that is actually horrifying. <laughs> but there you go. And then we've got the Leshy uh, Leshy Gourd. This is actually my favorite Leshy. They had them in the. Uh, player's Guide, I think, the, the the Lost Omens Player's Guide as a playable race, but I I love... Oh, they have, that's actually... That is actually different art. Well, I guess this is the bestiary art, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, they, they had the, the artwork... I was thinking they were going to use the artwork from the uh, from the, the Player's Guide um, because it had just more of like a... It just looked like a gourd, so instead of it being like this kind of scary-looking jack-o'-lantern, it just had this sort of like, you know kind of doofy look on its face, but I, I still loved it. Or maybe it was this one, the leafy, nope, okay. Yeah, so there we got the the leaf, the leaf leshy. It's really cool. And then we go to our lich, demi lich, which is just the, the floating, the floating head, creature level 15. Again, just cool stuff. This is actually a three card stat block. So we got pretty close to having three cards in 
a previous uh, in, in the last video, but this one here actually has uh, three cards, which is really, really cool. So I got to put these back in the right order when I set these down. Whoops. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so there we go. We do have a three a three stat or three card creature. All right, and then we got the lich itself. Now, this one oddly enough actually all fits on one. Um, it doesn't have as many, I guess, unique abilities, and the Demi Liches are the more powerful versions of a Lich. Um, it's kind of cool to see that they still retain that in Pathfinder. Um, so yeah, so here we have the, the Lich, their list of spells. That's yeah, a cool looking Lich too. Like I said, I always was a big fan of, uh, of Liches. They were some of my favorite monsters. And then we have the Linoworm Crag. And this one has two stat blocks as well. Now there is a lot of empty space here, but uh, I think essentially, and this is another smart thing, is that they didn't want to start a feature on one card and end it on another. So because they couldn't fit the whole breath weapon ability there, they just put it onto a second card. Perfectly, perfectly okay with that. Again, makes sense. It's a logical thing to do. Then we have the Ice Lina Worm, which is also going to have two cards. And then we've got the Tarn Lina Worm, which is right there. And so that was one of the, uh, the sealed bundles there, but it did continue on to the next one. So there's that there. Alright, uh, so the Linder Worm Tor, that's actually pretty cool as well. That's a two card one as well, so we'll uh, put those both there. Then we got our Lizard, so we got the Giant Gecko and the Frilled. Giant Monitor Lizard, Lizard Folk Defender. I've always loved Lizard Folk too. Lizard Folk Scout, a little blowgun there, which is awesome. Lizard Folks Stargazer. Again, truthfully, I don't think I've actually looked at the Lizard Folks in uh, in Pathfinder Second Edition, oddly enough. <clears throat> and then we have the Manticore and other horrors. Deadly Mantis. <laughs> I love it. And then we got the Giant Mantis. So they did recycle the artwork here as well, but again, I think the only difference really is just the size. So that's that's a situation where I'm I'm totally fine with it. It's just one's a larger version of the other, so it it makes sense for them to do that. Then we have the Medusa. That's actually pretty cool. Merfolk Warrior. Merfolk Wave Collar. It's pretty cool as well. Then of course the Mimic. And they didn't go with the treasure chest one, which is what you normally see, so that's pretty cool. Have it as a chair instead. Then the Minotaur. The Moo Spore, which is two cards. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. So that was one of the things on the, on the box. I'll show that maybe at the end of the video, but yeah, cool. Another two card one here. Uh, the Makrati. Guardian Mummy, and then the Pharaoh Mummy, which is a two, two card one. Dark Naga, Guardian Naga, Nightmare, that is awesome. That is awesome. And then the Greater Nightmare, which again, they for these ones they did uh, use different artwork, which is cool. Then the, the Nilith. Oh. Then we have the Nymph Dryad. <clears throat> then the Nymph Dryad Queen, which has two cards. So we get different art there. And then we have the Nymph, uh, the Nead. And then the Nead Queen. 
giant octopus. Mega Shark versus giant octopus. For anyone who gets that reference, I truly apologize. Uh, then the Oflith. Again, I, I know I said that wrong. Ogres, here we go. Ogre Boss. That's pretty cool. Ogre Glutton. I don't know if that was in the book or not, but that is that is cool. And then we got the Ogre Warrior. Black Pudding. Oh, gelatinous Cube. Okra Jelly. Sewer Ooze. I don't think that was in there actually either. I don't recognize that art anyway. And then our orcs, so we have the Orc Brute. The Orc War Chief. And then the Orc Warrior. So again, different arts for each. One of my favorite monsters of all time. A little poop monster. Well, not little, it's large, but just the, the poop monster, Atyug. That's actually a really cool looking image of it too. Another favorite, the owl bear, Pegasus, Phoenix, uh, the Planar Scion, Asmar Redeemer, Duskwalker Ghost Hunter, Tiefling Adept. Actually, that's pretty cool looking too. And then the Poltergeist, which has two cards. Poracha. No. And then the, the Protean Kakatar. That's actually pretty cool looking. And that's got two two stat cards. Then the the Nanette. Oh, okay. Oh no, that's right. Then the Void Worm, which has two cards as well, so we'll just... That's pretty cool looking too. And the Psycho Pump. Morigna. Dang, that's pretty cool looking too. Then the, the Nosi and Osai. <laughs> Then we got some dinosaurs, pterosaurs, the quailant, whoa, whoops, trying to keep this relatively easy to put back in the box and keep it in order, Rakshasa, is that the Rakshasa? Oh, yeah. cool. Raksha, Raksasha Raja, there's one I'm used to. That's pretty cool with their backwards hands. And that one's got two stat blocks. Then we got some rats, giant rat and rat swarm. Rat folk, grenadier. Red cap, which has two cards. Reef claw. That's actually pretty awesome looking too. I like that. Rimoraz. Rock. And then we got two cards for the Roper. I don't know, it looks like it's actually um, has it as like a stalactite, which is pretty cool. Alright, so just one more stack of cards to go. <coughs> Alright, so up first we have the Rust Monster, the Seder. Giant scorpion. Oh, it's taken down a. I thought for a second it's like, why do they have a scorpion with a tiger's head? But no, it's a, a giant scorpion that's that's taken a tiger down. And then scorpion swarm. Ugh. Glad we, I'm glad I live in a place that we don't have to worry about those. Uh, so sea devil baron. So I think sea devils. Yeah. Okay. They're cool. Then we got the brute. Sea Devil Scout, Sea Serpent, 
the shadow, a greater shadow, which kind of looks like the symbiote, but still cool, the chambler, don't know why I said it with a horrible French accent, but there we go, the great white shark, one of my favorite animals in nature, and the megalodon, Shining Child. Oh. Okay. Here we go. The Shoggoth. Or Shoggoth. Straight out of HP Lovecraft. Uh, the Shulm. Just big old. Big old, like, naked roll mat type. Uh, mole rat type of thing. The Schmurg. Perfect. Sin Spawn. Okay, perfect. So I said in the first video that, like, at first I thought, because this creature's on the box, I thought, oh, that must be, the, like, the ghast. But then I realized partway through that I actually remembered that Sin Spawn was a thing, but I, I wasn't sure if I was actually right or not. But yeah, here we go. So I was right. I feel vindicated now. Skeletal. Skeleton. Skeletal Champion. Then we have the giant skeleton, skeletal horse, skeletal, skeletal hulk, skeleton guard. Okay, and that's all the different various skeletons. Get different art for each, which is cool. <clears throat> Skull taker. Oh, that's got two stat cards there. The Slurk. <laughs> uh, oh man, I never realized I needed a giant saber-toothed toad in my life before, but uh, now that I see this, I I don't know how I've lived this long without it. That is awesome. Then we got some snakes, the ball python, giant anaconda, Whoops, giant viper. And then regular viper. Oh, they used to actually use separate art for those. Soulbound doll. It's just creepy and weird. Sphinx. <sighs> and this part that I'm really not looking forward to, so um, here we go. Giant or just just spiders. Giant tarantula. The spider goliath. Uh, I'm, I'm not a spider person. I think that they're gross. Um, hunting spider. Spider swarm. Okay, we're done. We're past those. Uh, then we got sprite, which will cover up that spider swarm nicely. And then we have the, the Grig sprite. Pixies. Then the Tengu sneak. It's like the, the crow person. Uh, Terotricus. I know I said that wrong, but... I like how I said I wasn't going to try to pronounce something if I wasn't sure about it, and I've gone on to, to do just that every single time. Um, or the exact opposite, I should say, every single time. Uh, tree Razor. Oh, that's cool looking. That is cool looking. Then, of course, we have our troll. There's this on the box there. It's also the, the, the creature shown on the front cover of the book. And we got the troll king. Unicorn. The Ulthal. Oh, that's neat looking, too. Oh, that's got two cards. And here we go Vampire Count which has two cards, yep. So Vampire Count, and then Vampire Mastermind, and then Vampire Spawn Rogue. So yeah. Again, different arts for all of them, which is cool. Then the Warg. Then the Warg Winter Wolf. Warsworn, which there are two of. 
Ugh. Must be Gargant. Yeah, that's, that's a big old creature. We got the giant wasp. And then wasp swarm. <laughs> oh my. Oh no. Web lurker. Oh, okay. That's not so bad. It's gross, but not so bad. Uh, Wimuth. Wimuth. The Wendigo. Right, yeah. Just trying to keep these organized. Then we get into our wear creature. So we've got the wear bear. Lawful good. Wear rat. Lawful evil. That's actually really cool looking too. Werewolf. And the white. Drain life. Willow wisp. That's actually pretty cool looking too. They're usually just like these undefined, like just balls of light. But I actually kind of like the, the skull look there. I think that's pretty cool. Then we got the wolf slash dire wolf. Again, the only difference is their size. Wraith. Again, that's actually another cool looking piece of art there. Then the Zolgoth Leader, the Stalker, and the Warrior. Then we have the Yete, and that's, yes, that's the way that I'm going to pronounce it for the rest of my life. And uh, again, there be a few of you that get the, the horrible, horrible reference. Uh, but the Yete, although he's not all wrapped in what looks like used toilet paper, so that's obviously not an accurate depiction of what it should look like. Uh, and then we have the Zaramoon. Okay. Large earth elemental. And then we got some zombies. So we have the plague zombie. Ugh. That is gross, but awesome. Then we have the zombie brute and the zombie shambler. And then the zombie hulk. So that was my look at the Pathfinder Bestiary Battle Cards for 2nd Edition Pathfinder and overall uh, my opinions really haven't changed. In fact, I think they've just been sort of reinforced or strengthened from what I felt yesterday when I recorded Part 1. This is an awesome product. I think that they just did everything right with this, uh, with this particular set. Um, the design of the cards is very pleasing to look at, you know, it's got a very nice aesthetic to it. Uh, visually, um, the artwork is fantastic, and they really went above and beyond with it. Like, they didn't have to have different art for all the three different age categories for the dragons, for each of the dragons that they have, but they did that. You know, they didn't have to have different art for some of the things that wasn't in there. They could have just used one image for, like, a knoll, and, um, you know, just had the different cards with the different stats. And I would have totally understood that, but they didn't, which I think is, you know, really fantastic. There are a couple of examples of them reusing the same art for different creatures, but honestly, it was it never felt like it was them taking the easy way out uh, with it, especially if something is just literally a larger version of the same thing. Um, so it made sense to use the same artwork, or in cases with things like mounts or animals, uh, where they could fit, you know, multiple stat blocks on a single card, um, then I think that was, again, the right decision to make. So it's just really, you know, great quality overall. And uh, I'm really impressed with it. I, I honestly, I, I think that this is a very sound investment for people that are running second edition Pathfinder campaigns, uh, especially if you are running your games away from home and you want to cut down on the amount of stuff that you're carrying with you. Now, obviously, the card box is if you carry the whole thing, you know, weighs more than the actual bestiary book, but you're not really intended to take the entire uh, assortment of cards with you. This is something where the, the main focus is just to grab the cards that you need for whatever scenario that you're running, and, you know, you can, you can leave, essentially leave the bestiary at home, which is probably... Uh, which I, I shouldn't say probably, which I know for a fact is the way that I'm going to be using this once I get the chance to start running my uh, my games, once our local game store opens back up with the, the global pandemic thing finally, hopefully uh, when it settles down and is safe to do so. So yeah, a uh, fantastic product overall, highly recommend it. Um, I think it's great value uh, for what it is, 
and uh, yeah, it, they just they really knocked it out of the park. Um, as I said before, this is the standard that I would compare any other uh, product of similar nature to. So any other monster based stat card uh, products that I get um, going forward or even looking back in sort of a retroactive way, um, this is what I would compare them to and this product absolutely kills it in terms of quality and, um, and the attention to detail and uh, effort that was put into it. So overall, a uh, uh, fantastic job. So uh, once again, thank you very much to the good folks at Paizo for sending this my way for the purposes of doing a review. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, let me know in the comments below uh, if you plan on picking this up for your second edition Pathfinder games, or if you already have, let me know how you've been able to use them and integrate them into your campaigns. I always like to hear your guys' feedback on these subjects, so looking forward to that. Uh, so thanks again for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care.